Lord, we trust in your love. For you alone, our God eternal, true honor in heaven. Above, once again, let's declare it. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. The city of our God, the holy place, the joy of the victory he aids us against the enemy we bow down on our knees our knees come on let's worship him Let's lift up his name. Lord, we want to thank you. Hallelujah. You deserve it, O oh God. Unfailing love. For you alone are God eternal. Lord, yes, we want to lift your name on high, for you deserve it, O oh God, you deserve, O oh Lord, to be lifted up, to be glorified, to be worshipped. For the very last time, church, lift up his name. Philippines, lift up the name of the Lord. Thank him, praise him, worship him. For he has done great things in our lives. Trust him because his love is unfailing. Glory to Jesus. Above. Yes, Lord, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. You deserve our praise. You deserve our worship. You deserve honor and glory. For you alone are God eternal. And you alone are the owner of this earth. We give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Shall we sit down and uh, continue to dwell in the presence of the Lord? For as the song says, great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. Amen? Dakila ang Panginoon, karapat dapat siyang purihin. At ang sabi doon, the Lord is lifted up on high, for He alone deserves our praise. He alone deserves our worship. He is the Lord. So today we are going to take our message from the book of Psalm, Psalm 24. Tayo po ay mag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos, hango sa aklat po ng mga awit. Psalm 24. Beginning verse 1, let me read. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? 
who may stand in his holy place, the one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god, they will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God their Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek Him, who seek your face, God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. Amen. Bless the Lord for his uh, powerful words. And uh, we are going to uh, try to expose these verses, powerful verses, from the book of Psalm 24. As a backgrounder, let me give you the Psalm 24 was written by King David. Siya po ang may akda ng halos lahat ng awit sa aklat po ng mga awit. And uh, this is based, likely based, on the events recorded in 1 Chronicles 13, 2 Samuel chapter 6, and 2 Samuel chapter 5, when King David was anointed as the king of Israel. And after he was anointed as king of Israel, he went into battle and defeated the Palestines thereby capturing the city of Jerusalem from the Jebusites in 2 Samuel chapter 5. And as a celebration bilang pagdiriwang sa kanilang tagumpay laban sa mga Jebusites at saka mga Pilisteo, sila po ay pumasok sa Jerusalem. They celebrated God's victory by bringing the Ark of the Covenant of the Tabernacle. At ito po ay kanilang inilagak Amen? Ipinasok sa holy city of God, which is Jerusalem. So, in the Old Testament, the Ark of the Covenant is the abiding presence of God. It is a reminder to the people of Israel, to the Jewish nation, of the testimony of God's presence upon His people. And this Ark of the Covenant, which is a demonstration and uh, a show of His presence upon His people, gave them victory against their enemies. Ito po ang nagbigay sa kanila ng tagumpay laban sa kanilang mga uh, kalaban, mga kaaway. At ito rin naman ang nag-establish sa kanila bilang isang bansa at ito rin naman ang nag-provide ng kanilang pangangailangan. So the Ark of the Covenant is the presence of God upon His people in the Old Testament. Ito po yung sumisimbolo sa presensya ng Diyos. At kung nasaan ang presensya ng Diyos, nandoon ang tagumpay. Amen po ba? Kung nasaan ang presensya ng Panginoon, nandoon ang uh, provision. Amen? At kung nasaan ang presensya ng Panginoon, you are established, you are firm, you are strong, you are victorious. So, kaya naman nasulat ni David ang Psalm 24. Because all through his reign as the king and leader of Israel, he, he knew that the presence of God was going with him, was being with him, thereby giving him victory on all sides. Kaya po, uh, nag-flourish po ang kingdom of Israel, ang nation of Israel during the reign of King David. And uh, Psalm 24 is a testimony to that. That's why he was able to write this. Okay, so let me begin again in Psalm 24 verse 1. What does it say? David said, the earth is the Lord and everything in it. Amen. 
it has been an age-old debate. Ad noseum na po sa iba, it, it has become so uh, repetitious already, debating about where does the earth come from? Saan nagmula ang daigdig? Saan nagmula ang tao? Saan nagmula ang lahat ng bagay ng ito? At napakaraming teorya. Ang tao raw ay nagmula sa unggoy, ayon sa, sa Darwinian theory. Ang tao, ang, ang daigdig daw na ito ay nagmula sa black hole, ayon sa black hole theory. Ayon sa Big Bang Theory ay nagmula ito sa mga nagbabangga ang mga elemento ng kalawakan at uh, mula sa mga uh, nagbangga ang yun ay lumabas ang organismo na naging earth, naging uh, daigdig. At throughout century ay pinagdidebatehan saan ba nagsimula ang daigdig, saan ba nagsimula ang mundo. Saan ba nagsimula ang kalawakan? Where did it come from? Where did this earth come from? If they will only go back to, Ma to Psalm 24, they will find the answer. Because it is very clear and explicit. David said, the earth is the Lord and everything in it. In other versions of the Bible, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Lahat ng naandito. So, number one, Psalm 24 verse 1 is declaring that the world is God's possession. Amen. Amen. Ang daigdig na ito ay sino ang may maari? Ang Diyos. The world is God's possession. The whole earth belongs to God. The whole earth belongs to God and everything in it. Kaya po hindi pwedeng ang kinin ng kung sinong bansa na kanila ang mga islang ito. Sapagkat ang tunay na may-ari, technically ay ang Diyos. Amen? Pero sinasakop nila ang mga isla, sinasakop nila ang mga bansa-bansa, sapagkat akala nila sila ang may-ari. But we will continue to declare as children of God that the owner of all the things in this world is God. The world is God's possession. Spratlys is God's possession. The Philippines is God's possessions. Juan Felipe Reef is God's possessions. Why? Because the, the declaration has already been made. The whole earth belongs to God and everything in it. He is the owner of all. He owns it all. He owns the earth and everything in it. It did not say, and some of it. And, uh, and, uh, and maybe some, and uh, a portion of it. But the Bible says in Psalm 24 verse 1, The earth is the Lord and everything in it. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Therefore, the earth is God's possession. Amen? So no, nobody in this world can say, no, no nation in this world can say, that you know they own this thing and they own that thing and they own this island and they own this you know nation kaya naman kanila itong uh, sinasako pero ang sabi po ng Panginoon akin ang ang lahat ng iyan pag-aari ko iyan amen? amen the earth is god's possession the whole earth is god's possession in verse 2 what does it say in verse 2 kung babasahin po natin ulit yon Sabi ganon, for he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Bakit sinasabi ng Diyos na pag-aari niya ang lahat ng ito? Sapagkat siya ang gumawa nito. Pag ikaw ang gumawa niyan, pag-aari mo yan. Ang Diyos ang gumawa. Ang sabi doon, he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. God is, is taking his claim as the world as his possession because he created it. He said, he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. So, sino po ang gumawa ng mga isla? Sino po ang gumawa ng mga, ng mga katubiganan? Whether it's the West Philippine Sea, South China Sea, Pacific Ocean, Indian Ocean, whatever ocean, whatever sea, whatever river, whatever lake, the Bible says, God created them all. It is God's creation and so God is staking His claim that it is His. He owns it. Amen? God owns everything. It is not the Chinese who owns it. You know? It is not any superpower 
or any nation that owns it, but it is God who owns everything. Amen? And we are just, you know, tiny, tiny creation of God na binigyan ng, ng biyayang ito. Pinagkatiwalaan ng biyayang ito. Pero akala mo, napaka ng tao na inaangkin ng lahat. Hello? Inaangkin ng lahat. Inaangkin. Kahit na, na, na isang uh, kapirasong isla ay inaangkin. What is with these people? What arrogance has come unto these people? Why are they staking their claim on all these things when it is not even theirs? It is God's property. But because, God is, because man has been arrogant that they are claiming it is theirs. But let us settle it once and for all. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. He established it upon the waters. He established it upon the seas. He established it upon the rivers. He created everything. Therefore, He owns everything. Amen? Amen. Ang Diyos ang may-ari ng lahat ng bagay. Kaya ang mga nagmamagaling at mga nagmamarunong at saka umaangkin ng kanilang hindi kanila, God knows that and God will judge them. Amen? Darating po ang, pag- ang, ang judgment sa kanila. Darating po ang dealing sa kanila. Because God knows that, you know, these are, this is, you know, out of arrogance. Yung pag-aangkin mo ng iyo na hindi naman sa iyo. Yan po ay, uh, ay uh, arrogance at the highest level. At hindi po yan makakalampas sa Diyos. Amen? Darating po ang panahon na ang mga yan ay lul- ilulubog ng Diyos. Sa ngayon, they seem to be very mighty. They seem to be a very powerful nation. And uh, you seem you know, feeling mo, napakaliit mo, ikukumpara sa kanila, kaya tameme ka lang, hindi ka makapagsalita. Pero isang araw, patutunayan ng Diyos, nang na lahat ng ito ay para sa kanya at kanya, at walang sino man ang may karapatang umangkin nito. Amen? So, He owns this world because He created it. The land, the water, the animals, the air, the very air that you breathe is from God. Amen? So what arrogance do you have when the very air that you you breathe is from God? Pag tinanggal ng Diyos ang 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 air, ilang segundo lang patay ka na. So ano ano ang anong may pagmamalaki mo? Anong pinagmamalaki mo? Eh ang buhay mo ay nakadepende sa sa air na nilalang ng Diyos, nilikha ng Diyos. The very air that we breathe is from God. The plants, the birds, He owns everything. He is sovereign over all His creation. Amen? Kung wala ang mga plants na yan, ma- ma- meron ka bang kakainin? Kung wala ang mga hayop na nilalang ng Diyos, meron ka bang kakainin? Saan mo nakuha yan? Bakit sinabi mo galing sa Diyos ang animals, ang plants, ang sun, ang sea, ang, ang waters and everything and the land? Basahin po nyo ang Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 to 31. Amen? The creative function of God when He said, Let there be. Amen? Let there be. Binigkas lang ng Panginoon. Nagkaroon. Nagkaroon ng lahat ng bagay. You read Genesis 1, 1 to 31. Then you will no longer, you know, kakalbuhin mo yung sarili mo sa pagre-research saan ba nagmula ang mundo. Sapagkat sinagot na po ito matagal ng panahon. God has created everything. The land, the water, the seas, the animals, the air, the plants, the birds. He also created you. Ikaw at ako. But the difference is when God created the universe and all that is in it, He just spoke and there came all these living things. But when it came to you and me, He did not speak. Siya po ay kumuha ng alabok. Amen? To the extent na dinumihan ng Diyos ang kanyang kamay para tayo lilukin, para tayo ay hulmahin. At mula sa nahulmang alabok, kanya po itong hiningahan. Amen? He breathed upon him, uh, he breathed upon it the breath of life. Kanya po itong hiningahan ng kanyang espiritu, ng kanyang buhay. Kaya yun ang pagkakaiba natin mula sa mga hayop, mula sa mga uh, plants, sa mga halaman. Yun ang pagkakaiba natin. Meron tayong espiritong nagmula sa Panginoon. That's why we are created in the image and likeness of God. 
tayo lang pong may espirito, gano'n man kakyut ang mga aso nyo, shih tzu, poodle, ano man ang kanilang lahi, cute sila pero wala silang espirito. They don't have the spirit that has come from God. It is only man, you and me, that has been breathed upon by the spirit of God. And that spirit gives us the connection to God, our creator. But unfortunately, that spirit died because of sin. When our forefathers, Adam and Eve, disobeyed God, they were disconnected from God. They were separated from God. And they died spiritually. Sila po ay namatay sa spirito. At yung kasalanan po na disobedience and rebellion against God, kinopya po ng humanity. Kinopya natin. We have disobeyed God. We have uh, rebelled against God. We have sinned against God. And therefore, lahat din po tayo ay namatay. Namatay saan? Sa ating mga spirito. That is why sa John chapter 3, dumating po yung concept of born again. That needs to be born again. The dead spirit of man. Yung pong spiritong namatay sa kasalanan, sapagkat sabi ng Romans 6.23, The wages of sin is death. Ang kabayaran ng kasalanan ay kamatayan. Kaya naman itong patay na kaluluwa, patay na spirito natin, ay kinakailangang mabuhay na maguli. At kailan po mangyayari yan? Kapag tayo po'y naipanganak sa spirito. John chapter 3, 3. You must be born again. John 3, 7. Unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John 3, 3. John 3, 7. Amen po ba? Amen. So, it is uh, an undeniable truth that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Ang pag-aari po ng Panginoon ay lahat ng bagay. Ultimo isla, ultimo ultimo pinakamaliit na na nilalang ng karagatan ay pag-aari ng Diyos. Pero ito po ay inaangkin, di ba? Inaangkin nila. Hindi kayo dito pwedeng mangisda. Amin lang to. Amin lang to. Why? Ano ang claim nyo rito? Historically, this is ours. Amen? Pero meron namang arbitration na ruling na ito ay pag-aari natin because it is within EEZ, Exclusive Economic Zone ng Pilipinas. Pero bakit napakalakas ang loob nilang angkinin ang hindi kanila? Eh kasi nga, arrogante. The arrogance of man has come up, you know, umakyat hanggang ulo. Kaya naman akala nila, kaya nila lahat ng bagay. But I am just going back to what the Bible is saying. Amen? In this, amidst this turmoil and uncertainties, because sabi nila baka magmimit siya na ito ng World War III, you know, which is the Bible uh, explicitly saying, Matthew 24, there will be wars and rumors of wars. Mga aliga, alingaw-ngaw ng mga darating na mga gera at mga uh, pag-aaway-aaway ng mga bansa-bansa. At kung titing na, if, if, you, if you are looking at the current events, medyo pumupwesto-pwesto na nga po itong mga military uh, forces ng mga powerful nations and they are ally, you know, nag align na sila with each other. Amen? So, uh, nagsimula sa... Sino mag-aakala kung sakali man, ano? Na ang, uh, ang, ang mitsa ng World War III magmumuka, magmumula po sa, sa West Philippine Sea mula sa, sa isang akala natin ay hindi naman malaking bagay. Pero, but, you know, things like this are happening right now. And so, sa, sino ba talaga ang may-ari nito? Pilipinas ba? O ang... ang, 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 ang Bansang China, ang may-ari po niya na ang Diyos. Psalm 24 verse 1. Kaya naman kung ikaw ay may tiwala sa Diyos, alam mong alam ng Diyos ang tama at matuwid, darating ang panahong ang matama at matuwid ang, mag- ang, mag- ang magwawagi. Amen? Because the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. So, everything down to your very breath belongs to God. Everything. Ilang minuto ka lang pwedeng mabuhay pag wala kang ano, oxygen. Ilang segundo lang, di ba? Mamamatay ka na. So, now, do you even thank God for the air that you breathe every day? Because if God snaps it out of your life, you're dead. And the first thing that you have to do is, Lord, thank you for the air that I breathe. 
because of it I am alive. But if you take away this air that I breathe, which is free, by the way, amen, it is sagana, hindi na uubos, ang gold na mimina, isang araw mawawala, the, the resources of the, of the world, of the earth, will, be, will become very, very low. Isang araw po ang mga non-renewable resources will be very low at isang araw mauubos po ito. Coal, oil, lahat po yan pwedeng mauubos isang araw. Pero the air is something that it will not, you know, hindi po mawawala sapagkat ito po ay biyaya ng Panginoon. Kaya naman, nag, 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 they are so scared and afraid that one day, the resources of the earth will be very low. They are trying to find resources in other planets like Mars or uh, kung saan po uh, kung saan po pwede silang makakuha ng resources sa moon. Uh, eh, nakita nila, wala palang mabubuhay sa moon sapagkat wala doong gravity. Sa Mars, they are trying, baka nga naman, meron doong uh, possibility na mabuhay ang tao at makakuha ng resources kasi isang araw, the earth will be depleted with its resources and we can't do anything about it. But praise God because everything belongs to God and it's a gift of God to us. But this gift is, you know, we, we abuse it. Mang tao, inaabuso yung regalong ito ng Panginoon. Hindi iniingatan. Kaya naman, may consequences ang mga pangabusong ginagawa natin sa ating kalikasan. So, but, you know, we should remember that everything is of the Lord. There is not a single nation, a single people, or group of people. There is not a single place in this world that does not belong to God. Everything belongs to God. Amen? Amen? Everything, every nation belongs to God. Every people or group of people belongs to God. Every race, every creation belongs to God. And there is not a single moment in your life that does not belong to God. Because every moment of your life belongs to God. Your Monday belongs to God. Your Tuesday belongs to God. Every second of your life belongs to God. Your Sunday belongs to God. There is nothing that you have that does not belong to God. That should be an established fact in your life. Then you will live your life full of gratitude. Punong-puno ka ng pasasalamat at hindi arrogance at kayabangan. Sapagkat napakatagal na po ng panahon na ang sentro ng buhay ng tao ay ang kanyang sarili. Man has always treated himself as so big and, and uh, great. Amen? That's why the arrogance has come up to his head. But no, if we will only realize Nothing belongs to us. It is just a borrowed life. Napaka, napaka ikli po ng buhay. Amen? And uh, this pandemic is trying to show us that, you know, you could be very strong and healthy today, but if you are hit with this virus, this mysterious virus, you could be gone. And uh, in the recent days, you know, before when I watch the news and see people dying, like, 400 a day, or uh, in America, 4,000 a day. In Brazil, 4,000 a day are people of, of people are dying from this virus. If you just look at them and see the news, and you are not related to these people, you don't even care, diba? But when somebody dies of this virus, and you know them personally, it hits you. It hits you hard. It clo it's close to home. And in the past few days, you know, kagabi lang, meron kaming virtual wake na inatenan of, uh, of, uh, of an acquaintance, ang isang kakilala po natin na yung kanilang pong ama ay uh, naging biktima po ng COVID-19. And, you know, sabi nga nung isang nagsalita doon sa virtual wake na yon, pati, ang, pati ngayon ang lamay ay ano na rin, very innovative, virtual na rin, nagsuzoom na lang. Because you cannot go and visit. Because of this virus, it, it separates us from each other. At sabi po nung kanyang uh, 
kaibigan, kaibigan niya yung matalik na kaibigan. Sabi niya, nung ang pare ko, nung na ano ng virus ay uh, okay pa siya, masaya pa siya. Sabi niya, okay naman daw siya. So, hindi ko akalaing ganun kabilis. Bigla na lang mawawala siya. Sapagkat relatively healthy po yung kanyang kumpadre. Wala pong uh, underlying medical conditions. But then, he 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 went off just like that. What does that, you know, give you? What does that make you realize that your life is a borrowed entity? Hiniram mo lang ito at pag ito'y kinuha sa'yo, wala kang magagawa. Because your very life is God's. Hindi mo pag-aari. Pag-aari ka ng Diyos. Amen? Kaya po napaka-importante na bawat minuto, segundo ng buhay natin ay iniaalay natin sa Panginoon. At ito'y mabuhay tayo sa humility and not arrogance. Recognizing that we are God's property. We are, we are God's ownership. We don't own our lives. And so, wala po tayong may pagmamalaki. Even our wealth, even our money. You know, nung nakaraan, nakita nyo sa balita, isang uh, celebrity napakayaman niya may ari siguro siya ng pinakamaraming bus na nag nag, ta, na, guma, lumalarga dito sa Metro Manila pero just the same yung kanyang pera po ay hindi siya na isalba sapagkat gusto niyang kahit bayaran niya ng milyon yung hospital hindi po siya matanggap kasi wala pong available na lugar sa hospital no money in this world can save her and she died just like an ordinary person in a tent waiting for her turn to be admitted in the hospital. Mer- marami po siyang pera. Pero wala pong nagawa yung pera niya. Sapagkat ang buhay po natin ay napaka-ikli. Hindi po natin ito pag-aari. Kaya dapat bawat araw ng buhay natin ay araw ng pagpupuri, pasasalamat sa Diyos sapagkat pinagkatiwalaan niya tayo ng buhay na ito. This is a gift. This is a blessing. And we, we recognize that it is God's. We are God's. The earth is the Lord and everything in it, including us. Pati tayo, pag-aari tayo ng Diyos. Hindi lamang ang mga karagatan, kalupaan, at ang mga halaman, at ang mga puno, at ang mga ibon sa kalawakan. Ang lahat ay pag-aari ng Diyos. Amen? That is a very established fact. Now, After establishing that God owns everything and the earth is His, what is our response to that? Okay? Sabi po doon ni, ni David, if we will continue sa verse 3, Who may ascend the hill of the Lord, who may stand in His holy place? So, sino ang makakapasok sa kanyang presensya? Sino ang makaka-enjoy ng lahat ng ito? Sapagkat ito'y pag-aari ng Diyos, Nilalang ng Diyos, created by the Lord. Who can enjoy this? Who can ascend the hill of the Lord? Who can enter His presence? Who may approach God and enjoy the blessings that He has created? Who? Who? Sa verse 4, the same question was answered by David. Nagtanong si David, sino? Sino ang makakaakyat sa hill ng Panginoon? Sino ang makaka-enjoy ng blessings ng Panginoon? Sino ang makaka-enjoy ng earth na ito na kung saan nilalang ng Panginoon? Sa verse 4, he gives this, the question, the answers. Number one, the Bible in Psalm 24, four says, He who has clean hands and a pure heart who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear by what is false. There are four qualifications for those people who can ascend into the presence of God, who can approach God. Number one, clean hands. Pag tayo po ay kumain, naalala ko nung mga bata kami, hindi ka makakapunta sa hapag ng kainan pag hindi ka naghugas ng kamay. That is number one rule. Amen? Number one, you're automatic yan. Kahit na gutom na gutom ka, huwag kang pupunta dun sa ano, sa kainan. Kinakailangan, pumunta ka muna sa gripo, maghugas ka ng kamay mo. Amen? That is very basic. Amen? Because we don't want, you know, eating this uh, food with, with bare, dirty hands. 
Likewise, in our lives, God wants us to have clean hands. It is symbolic of outward purity, of our actions, whatever we do, our activities, everything that we hold must be clean. Everything that we do must be clean. Everything that we have must be clean. Ano yung pag-aari mong yan? Yan ba ay malinis o ninakaw mo? Galing yan sa taxpayer's money. Hindi dapat para sa bulsa mo yan. Pero inako mo, malinis ba yan? Amen? Sabi nga nila, eh, uh, ano naman ang, uh, yung bahay na yan eh. Napakalaki nga, mansion. Pero alam mo naman na hindi yan malinis, galing sa marumi. Diba? You don't have dignity, you don't have a good reputation if people know that what you have is out of dirty money. Katas yan ng ano, katas yan ng droga, katas yan ng kasino, katas yan ng, uh, ng, uh, ng kasalanan, katas yan ng maruming bagay. So, the Bible says in Psalm 24, for you to be able to approach the presence of God, the Ark of the Covenant is the symbol of the presence of God in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, in our dispensation, wala na po ang Ark of the Covenant. Because the Ark of the Covenant has already been fulfilled by the Lord. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, the temple was torn. The veil of the temple was torn, which means tinanggal ng Panginoon yung hadlang, that you can approach the temple of God, you can access the presence of God freely. Tinanggal ng Diyos yung hadlang sapagkat binayaran niya ang ating mga kasalanan. In the same manner, ganun din po sa atin. We are supposed to be freely, you know, accessible in the presence of God. But because of our sin, we cannot. Amen? Meron pong umahad lang. Kaya nga sabi ng Bible, hindi ako bulag para hindi kita makita. O bingi para marinig ang iyong panagoy, ang iyong panalangin, pero may humahad lang. At yun ay ang kasalanan. Ganon din po ang sinasabi ni Psalm 24 verse 4 ni Haring David, Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Number one, he who has clean hands. In everything that we do, in every activity that we have, we should have clean hands. Malinis po ang ating mga ginagawa. Malinis po ang ating mga buhay. This is outward purity. This is outward holiness in our lives. The Bible says, for without holiness, we cannot see God. Do you want to see God? Holiness. Kaya wag mong i-expect na kung wala kang kabanalan, makakapasok ka ng langit. Kahit na sabihin mong na born again ka pa. Because the born again experience is just the beginning. Amen? And then after your born again experience, you live a life of obedience. Ikaw po ay mabubuhay sa pagsunod. 1 Corinthians chapter 6.13 Let's just read some of this, uh, you know, about clean hands, about clean life, about holy life. You say food for the stomach and the stomach for food and God will destroy them both. The body, however, is not meant for sexual immorality but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. Para saan daw po ang katawang ito? This is a holy temple of God. This is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Ito po ang templo ng banal na espiritu. Kaya't ang templong yan ay hindi raw po nararapat for sexual immorality. Yes? This body is not for sexual immorality but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. 1 Corinthians 6.18 Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. So, sexual immorality is abominable, condemnable in the presence of God. Wala po itong lugar sa, sa presensya ng Panginoon. That's why ito po yung unang qualification to be able to access and go into the hill of the Lord, into the presence of God. Flee sexual immorality. Huwag kang nakikipamatok sa hindi mananampalataya, lalo't higit huwag kang makikipagrelasyong sexual sa hindi mo naman asawa. That is sexual immorality. As well as engaging in sexual immorality like man-to-man -man sexual relationship or woman-to-woman -woman sexual relationship. Flee from all these things, the Bible says. 1 Corinthians 6.18 
2 Timothy chapter 2:21 Those who cleanse themselves from the latter will be instruments for special purposes made holy useful to the master and prepared to do any good work sila raw na umaalis sa mga bagay na ito sila raw na itinatakwil ang mga bagay na ito ay instrumento ng Diyos for a special purpose sila po ay binanal at sila po ay gagamitin for a good work amen hindi ka magagamit ng Panginoon for any good work if you indulge in sexual immorality if you indulge in all these kinds of sins amen So, kaya nga sabi ng Panginoon, clean hands. Colossians 3.5 Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. Sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Amen? Greed is idolatry, the Bible says. Ano yung greed? Pagmamahal sa pera. Pagmamahal sa pera, more than sa Diyos. Pagmamahal sa pera, more than sa tawag mo. Pagmamahal sa pera, more than sa kalooban ng Diyos sa buhay mo. That is idolatry. And idolatry is punishable by God. Sabi ng Panginoon, flee from idolatry. Pag hindi mo ginawa yan, susumpain ko ang lahat ng lahi mo hanggang ikaapat na salin lahi. Ganon kagalit ang Diyos sa idolatry. And idolatry is not just having you know images in our homes but idolatry is idolatry of the heart something that you idolize something that you you know regard as more important than god and what are those money men women immorality lust desires of the flesh this could be idolatrous things that god condemns sa so, so colossians 345 sabi po doon colossians 35 put to death put to death amen ibig sabihin patayin mo hindi yan kusang mamamatay. Patayin mo. Ikaw ang gagawa nun. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin, eh kasi mahina ako eh. Kasi natutukso ako eh. Kasi uh, hindi ko kaya. Amen? Kasi hindi mo naman pinapatay. Patayin mo, sabi ng Bible. Put to death whatever desires you have. Whatever immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed. Because all of these are idolatry, saith the Lord. Colossians 3.5 Hebrews 13:5 Marriage should be honored by all and the marriage bed be kept pure for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Amen. Hindi po ako nagsasabi niyan, Hebrews 13 verse 5. Wag mo raw dudumihan yung yung marriage bed mo by not by uh, committing adultery and sexual immorality because marriage should be honored. Amen? Dapat daw pahalagahan mo at i-honor yung iyong vows, yung iyong marriage vows. And so, you do not de- defile the bed. The mer- keep the marriage bed kept pure. That's why adultery and concubinage is a sin. Ito po ay uh, kasalanan. Hindi po yan isang ordinaryong uh, bagay na na katanggap-tanggap. Ang lipunan po ngayon ay tinatanggap ito, di ba? Katanggap-tanggap na ito. Yung may asawa ka, pero may asawa ka pang iba. Meron kang, uh, meron kang uh, asawa, pero meron ka pang kap- ibang pamilya, yung ganun. And uh, the, this society has become so numb to it that we don't feel we don't feel the moral and ethical responsibility to be faithful to our families. But it has become a norm to be unfaithful and to commit adultery and sexual immorality. But God condemns it under the clean hands, under the clean hands na qualification ng Psalm 24 verse 4. 1 Timothy 5.22 Do not be hasty in the laying on of hands and do not share in the sins of others. Keep yourself pure. Huwag ka raw makikigaya, makikisalo sa kasalanang ginagawa ng iba. Sapagkat, sabi ng Panginoon, panatalihin mo ang iyong purity. Keep yourself pure. 1 Timothy 5.22 And Matthew 5.8, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Amen? Sino rang makakakita sa Diyos? Sila na may malinis na puso. Blessed are the pure in heart, 
for they will see God. Matthew 5, 8. So, yan po yung number one qualification. Ano po yung second qualification ng Psalm 24 verse 4? Clean hands and pure heart. Yung kanina, outward purity. Yung actions natin na nakikita. Halimbawa, may asawa ka, manatili kang may asawa. Huwag kang nakikipamatok. Huwag kang nakikipagrelasyon sa hindi mo asawa. That is an example of outward purity. Clean hands. What is number two? Sabi ni David, pure heart. Pure heart, on the other hand, is the inward purity and holiness. Your thoughts, your desires, your motives. Walang nakakabasa niyan. Ikaw lang. Pero yung mga ginagawa mong kasalanan, halimbawa, nagdodroga, umiinom ka ng alak, nagpapa, nagpapakalulung ka sa alak, nakikiya, nagkukumit ka ng sexual immorality, these are outward manifestation. But your motives, your desires, your thoughts, you and God alone can know that. Amen? So, anong sabi ng Bible patungkol dito? Yung mga kinatago-tago mong mga kaisipan, tinatago-tago mong mga, mga desires and motives. What does the Bible say? Mm, sabi po doon, Philippians 4.8, Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Amen? Lahat daw po ng, ng mabuti, tama, marangal, puro, maganda, lovely, at admirable, kaigay-igaya. Ito lang ang isipin mo. So, there is no place for pornographic thoughts. There is no place for lustful thoughts. There is no place for lustful motives and desires. Because the Bible in Philippians 4.8 says, Think of these things what is noble, what is right, what is pure, what is lovely, what is admirable. Think about these things. So, ang Bible po, kung babasahin lang natin, it gives you a platform, it gives you, ano ba yung plano kapag uh, architect ka, yung ganun? Ayun, blueprint. It gives you a blueprint on how to live your life in a way that is pleasing to God. Philippians 4.8 if you're not reading the Bible, you will not know this. So kapag ikaw ay merong mga pornographic thoughts, meron kang mga lustful thoughts, meron kang mga suicidal thoughts, meron kang mga depressive thoughts, meron kang mga obsessive thoughts, you know that it is not the will of God. Because God's will is for you to have noble thoughts, right thoughts, pure thoughts, lovely thoughts, admirable thoughts. Think about such things, the Bible says. So you try to surrender. All those thoughts that are not of God, Lord, take capture it. Paano mo ito ma, paano mo raw ito ma, 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 Yung mga lustful thoughts na yan. Huwag mong hayang naglalaro-laro. Yung mga obsessive suicidal thoughts. Ano ang sabi doon? You demolish it. You destroy it. By what? By capturing it. By, sabi po doon, take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. Hulihin mo raw. Isubject mo at ipa ilalim mo sa Panginoon. You take captive every thought. You take captive, you take control of the thought. And then you submit it to Christ. Make it obedient to Christ. Amen? Huwag mong hayaan na ikaw ay uh, binabaha ng mga, mga maruruming kaisipan, mga bawal na kaisipan, o mga hindi ma kaiga-igayang kaisipan. Ano po ang gagawin mo doon? You demolish it by taking captive of it and make it subject and obedient to Christ. Hello? Amen. And uh, eh, mahit madali lang yan sabihin, hindi. Hindi yan ikinuman ng Lord kung hindi mo kayang gawin. Hindi ka bibigyan ng Lord ng isang command na take captive of your thought ng hindi mo kayang gawin. 
kaya mo yan. Amen? Sa pagkatutulungan ka ng biyaya ng Panginoon. The grace of God is sufficient for you. Amen? You can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. So, kinakailangan po natin uh, malaman ang mga bagay nito because pure heart, the Bible says, number one is clean hands, number two is pure heart. Kailangan pure po yung heart natin. Romans 12.2 Do not copy, copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform your mind. Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Ang ganda po ng version na to. Then you will learn to know the will of God which is good, pleasing, and perfect. Alright? So, aside from taking captive of your thought, okay, do not let it linger. Sapagkat habang matagal na pinaglalaroan ng, ng jablo yung iyong, kama, yung iyong uh, mind, yan yung battleground eh. It is the battleground. Bago ka gumawa ng kasalanan, nandoon na yun. In-entertain mo. At dahil in-entertain mo, nag-ugat. Kaya ngayon, it, it controls you. Pero kapag sa simula pa lang, you take captive of it. Amen? You capture it, and then you make it obedient to Christ, then it will be uh, easy for you to do Romans 12 too, which is what? Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but let God transform your mind. Amen? Pagkatapos mong i-subject, i-submit, i-surrender sa Panginoon yung thoughts mo, Lord, Alam ko, hindi, ka, hindi mo kalooban to. So, Lord, tulungan mo ako. I surrender it to you. And then, darating yung grace ng Lord, yung biyaya ng Lord, tutulungan ka niya. At sabi doon, God will transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Amen? Bigla na lang, mawawala yung desire mo for these things. Mawawala yung desire mo for nicotine for pornography, for sexual immorality and lustful thoughts, mawawala iyon because God will transform your mind. God will change your mind. Amen? But the first thing you did was to surrender, to submit, to take captive of your thought and make it obedient to Christ. Amen po ba? Amen. And then, kapag ginawa mo raw yun, you will learn the will of God. Malalaman mo kung ano yung will ng Diyos. We cannot know the will of God because we are not transformed. Our minds are not occupied by godly thoughts, but by, you know, demonic and lustful thoughts, worldly thoughts. That's why the first thing that God has to do in our lives is to transform this mind, to transform our thoughts. And then, the Bible says in Romans 12 too, we will be able to discern the will of God. And when you discern the will of God, and then, Aba, safe ka. Kasi nasa kalooban ka ng Panginoon. Amen? Maraming tao, maraming tao wala sa will ng Lord sapagkat hindi po nila dinaanan ang mga prosesong ito. Kaya hanggang ngayon, they are cap- their thoughts are captive by the enemy instead of captive by the will of God. And then, if you will know the will of God, Romans 12, 2, you will do what is good, pleasing, and perfect in His sight. Are you doing what is good? Are you doing what is pleasing? Are you doing what is perfect in the sight of God? Or, it is completely the opposite. Pure heart. Pure heart. Amen? Purong puso para sa Panginoon. Number three. Ano pa po yung sabi ni, ni uh, David? In order for you, who may ascend? Who is qualified? Who may ascend to the hill of the Lord? Who will enter the presence of God? Aside from having clean hands and pure heart, sabi po ni David, those who do not trust in an idol. Amen? Those who do not trust in an idol. Sabi po doon sa Psalm 24 verse 4, those who do not lift up his soul to an idol. So, God is a jealous God. We know that. Napaka mapanibuguin po ng Diyos. And so, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, He is always dealing with idolatry. Idolatry of the heart. Idolatry of His people. In the Old Testament, every time, the Israelites worship other gods, hidden gods, Baal, 
God punishes them. Sila po ay pinapanish ng Panginoon. Because God cannot tolerate idolatry. He hates idolatry. Idolatry is abominable in the sight of God. Because God is God desires devotion to Him alone. You know, we should be devoted to God and God alone. We should not keep idols in our heart. Our, you know, especially so if our idols are lifeless and powerless, you know, even so these are false gods. Ito po ay mga maling mga Diyos-Diyosan sa ating mga relihiyon o sa ating mga buhay. Sa ex- let me just let the Bible kasi baka I will be offending you. Sabihin po ng mga marami, bakit mo ba inaatake yung relihiyon namin? Bakit mo ba inaatake yung aming mga kinamulatan? Ang aming mga tradisyon? Bakit lagi mong binabanggit yan? Okay, hindi na lang po ako magsasalita. I will just read from the scriptures. Exodus 20 verse 3. Exodus 20 verse 3, You shall have no other gods before me. Okay, people say, Uh, that is not a god. That is just an an image. That's not a god. Okay. Basahin po natin sa Psalm 135. Oh, taloy ko na rin sa Exodus. Exodus 20 verse 4. You shall not make for yourself a carved image. Kinurbahan. Carved image. Nililok na mga imahe. Do not make for yourselves images that are carved or any likeness of anything that is in heaven or above that is on earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not carve images. Psalm 135, 15 to 17. The idols of the nations are silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths, but do not speak. They have eyes, but do not see. They have ears, but do not hear, nor is there any breath in their mouth. Yun daw pong ating mga diyos ay gawa sa gold and silver na may mga mata. ba? Diba? Pero hindi nakakakita. May mga bibig, pero hindi nakakapagsalita. May tenga, pero hindi nakakarinig sa ating mga paulit-ulit na dasal. At sila ay may mga bibig pero they, they do not have breath in their mouth. It is very clear. You know, the images that we carve, they have, Im- they have eyes, they have nose, they have mouth. They look beautiful. Dinadamitan natin sila. Pinapalumutian. Dinadamitan ng ginto. Ginaga- dinadamitan natin sila ng mga uh, silver and gold. At marami pang mga kumikinang-kinang. At hindi lamang yan. Hindi lamang natin dinadamitan. Pinaparada pa natin. Iniilawan. Dinadasalan. Inaalayan. Ng mga bulaklak at mga kandila. This is idolatry. My brethren. And I'm sorry to offend you. I am sorry. I'm not attacking you. I'm not attacking. This is out of mercy. Out of love. Because the Bible hates idolatry. And idolatry will prohibit you to access the presence of God. Just like Psalm 24 verse says. 24 verse 4 says. Let me continue in Isaiah 44, 9 to 12. All who fashion idols are nothings, and the things they delight in do not profit. The witnesses neither see nor know that they may be put to shame, Who fashions or who fashions a god or casts an idol that is profitable for nothing? Behold, all his companions shall be put to shame, and the craftsmen are only human. Let them all assemble. Let them stand forth. They shall be terrified. They shall be put to shame together. The iron smith, iron smith, yung mga magbabakal, they take cutting tools and work it over the coals. He fashions it with hammers, pinupukpuk daw ng mga martilyo, and works it with his strong arms. He becomes unhungry, and then his strength fails, and then he drinks no water in his face. Okay, describe po doon yung isang blacksmith na kukuha ng isang, uh, isang bagay at ito ay kanyang titiltilin 
At pagkatapos, he will cut it, he will work on it, and he will fashion it into an image, an idol. And then, magugutong siya, kukuha siya ng, uh, pag, iiwanan niya muna yung ginagawa niya, kakain muna siya. Tapos, uh, medyo gusto pa niyang mag-yosi, kukuha siya ng yosi. The same hands that he uses to carve the idol, the image, which people try to venerate and, uh, and, and regard as a, a small god, is the same hand that he uses to commit sin. Amen? And that is folly. That's foolishness, the Bible says. Leviticus 26.1 You shall not make idols for yourselves or erect an image of pillar. You shall not set up a figured stone in your land to bow to it, for I am the Lord your God. Wow! Pero ang ginagawa po natin, gumagawa tayo ng napakalaking mga imahe, nilalagay pa natin sa EDSA for all the people to see. We are not contented with small images, but big images, just like Leviticus 26.1 says. Sabi doon, you shall not set up figured stone in your land to bow down to them. But no, we put them in, in, in a very public place for people to see. We carve them, we figure them from stone. We carve them as images with eyes but do not see, with, you know, with ears but do not hear. This is what we are doing, brethren. Hebrews 13.5, keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For what he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So, hindi lang po ang idolatry ay yung mga images na ating nilalagay sa ating mga maaltar o sa ating mga simbahan, kundi ang idolatry rin ay kapag ating pinahalagahan ang pera ng higit sa ating Panginoon. Sa uh, Hebrews 13.5, keep your life free from the love of money. Okay? It did not say keep your life free from money. It said, keep your life free from the love of money. Money is a blessing. Just don't love it more than your God. Blessing po ang, pag, ang, ang pag, paghawak ng malaking pasalapi sapagat ito po ang ginagamit ng Panginoon para i-accomplish yung advancement ng kingdom niya in the last days. But the Lord is giving us explicit warning, let us not love money, but Keep our lives free from the love of money. Because the Lord has promised, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. In these times of pandemic, people are losing their jobs. People are closing their businesses. But the Lord has promised, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Can you trust the Lord when He promises that? Kaya mo bang pagtiwalaan ng Diyos? Nasa gitna ng, ng, ng mahigpit na pangangailangan ng pera sapagkat ngayon po ay uh, oras ng krisis dahil sa pandemya Ikaw po ba ay makakapagtiwala sa Diyos na hindi mo mamahali ng pera bagkos magiging tapat ka pa rin sa iyong pagbibigay. Magiging tapat ka pa rin sa iyong pag-iikapo, sa iyong paghahandog, sa iyong pagpe-pledge, sa iyong sacrificial offering and sacrificial giving. You will not abandon that. And you will continue to trust that the Lord will never leave you nor forsake you. The Lord has promised. Napakaraming pangako ng Lord sa atin. Amen? Napakaraming assurances na hindi niya tayo pababayaan, hindi niya tayo iiwanan. Amen? So sa gitna po ng pandemyang ito, maging tapat po tayo sapagkat ang pagbibigay po ang magiging susi at daan ng ating pagpapala. Give and it shall be given to you. Amen. Subukan niyo ako ang sabi ng Panginoon. Kung hindi, bubuksan ko ang kalangitan, pati na ang durungawan, at ikaw ay aking babahain ng pagpapala. The Lord will continue to bless you because your blessing does not depend on your economy, does not depend on your business. Your blessing depends on God. Maraming mga bagay ang dumating sa buhay ng, ng mga anak ng Diyos, sa buhay ng mga Israelita. Sila po ay dumating sa matinding mga laban ng buhay. Pero kahit kailan hindi sila pinabayaan ng Panginoon. Sa gitna ng ilang, in the middle of the wilderness, they had nothing to do, they had nothing to eat there. It's a wilderness. 
What can they eat? Wala, oh, hindi yun forest na meron sila makukuha ng mga prutas. It's the wilderness. It's a desert. What can they eat there? They will all die. But not no one died. Because God was faithful to, the, to His promise to the Israelites. Amidst the desert, amidst the wilderness, came the manna from heaven. As a testament to the promises of God, to His faithfulness, to His truthfulness, to His trustworthiness. Amen? And in the same manner, the Lord is telling you, Anak, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Put your trust in the Lord. Put your trust in God. Because I tell you, this pandemic, it will not, you know, get better sooner. Hindi po ito magiging maigi ng, ng, ng sooner, although we are praying for it. Amen? But, you know, if worse comes to worst, amen, there is no reason for panic for true children of God. Because the Lord has promised, anak, whatever situation you are in, I promise you, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Amen? Unless you don't want to forsake God. Malibang ikaw mag-forsake kay Lord. Pero si Lord, hindi kanya niya forsake Si Lord, hindi kanya niya iiwan. Malibang ikaw ang may iwan kay Lord. Malibang ikaw ang mag-iwan kay Lord. Amen po ba? So, I will never leave you <coughs> nor forsake you. So, ano na po yung mga qualifications na inaral natin sa Psalm 24 verse 4 na sinabi ni David, The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, and who is qualified to enjoy that fullness? Who is qualified to access and go up to the hill of the Lord and enjoy the blessings of God? Number one, he who has clean hands. Number two, he who has pure heart. And number three, he who does not swear by a false god or give himself to idolatry. Number four, number four, Psalm 24 verse four, Ah, uh, yun po pala. The, number three is, uh, he who does not lift up his soul to an idol. And number four, he who does not swear by what is false. He who does not swear by what is false. Siya na hindi sinungaling sa madaling salita. Okay? So, yung una, purity, outward purity in action. Pangalawa, purity in thoughts. Number three, purity in our, uh, in, in our worship. Yung hindi tayo nag-worship sa mga idolatrous uh, images. At ang number four, purity in speech. Purity in speech. Napakahalaga po sa Panginoon ng ating mga bibig. Napakarami pong mga scriptures ang uh, kinokondemn ng Panginoon, ang lying tang, ang sinungaling na bibig. Pero napakarami pong tao, ang pagsisinungaling ay... Uh, <laughs> Bulaklak na ng dila. It's it's a norm. Natural na sa tao ang magsinungaling, di ba? Maliit man o malaki, ang sabi ng Bible, that's a lie. Lips that do not speak lies or falsehood, but always the truth. These are the people who can have access to God. John 8.44 You are of your father, the devil. And you want to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Whenever he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Sino raw po ang ama ng kasinungalingan? Si Satan. Kaya kapag tayo ay sinungaling, ang ating pong uh, ama ay si Satan. Gusto mo ba na ama mo si Satan? <laughs> you are a liar and you are like your father who is the father of lies. Amen? And that is Satan himself. And in our lives, God wants us to be able to keep our lips, to keep our tongue Speaking only the truth. Amen? Yung ating pong mga buhay ay uh, ba- guardyado po ng ating Panginoon. Psalm 52 verse 3. You love evil more than God. 
falsehood more than what is speaking what is right. Amen? So, sa buhay daw po natin, tayo raw po ay uh, mas mahal po natin ang uh, kasinungalingan kaysa sa katotohanan. Lalo na po, malapit na naman po ang, uh, alam niyo po, ang, uh, ang mga buhay po ng, ng, mga, ng mga Filipino. Kapag malapit na yung eleksyon, ang dami nangangako, di ba? Ang dami nangangako, parang totoo. Pero pag nandun na sila sa pwesto, hindi pala, kasi nungalingan pala yung mga pangakong iyon. Kaya nakakalungkot po sapagkat, uh, yeah, marami pa pong mga, marami pa rin pong mga Pilipino ang hindi po natututo. Proverbs 8.7 For my mouth will utter truth and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. Amen? So, kinakailangan daw po ang ating mga bibig ay ina lang ang truth because wickedness is an abomination to our lips. Proverbs 12.17 He who speaks the truth and tells what is right but a false witness is deceit. Proverbs 12.19 Truthful lips will be established forever, but a lying tongue is only for a moment. Amen? Yun daw pong uh, sinungaling na bibig, pansamantala lang yan. Pero yung nagsasabi ng katotohanan, he will be established forever. Amen. Kapag ang buhay mo ay nabubu kapag ang buhay mo ay nakatindig sa kasinungalingan, ikaw ay babagsak. Pero kapag ang buhay mo ay nakatindig sa katotohanan, what is truthful coming out of your lips, you are established forever. Amen. So, at yung gusto mo yung mabuhay ka at uh, madali kang bumagsak at madali kang magfail o yung ikaw ay established and firm forever. You will become like that when you are a very truthful person. Truthfulness comes out of your lips. Amen? Now, ang, ang ganda po nun, di ba, yung sinabi ni David, these are clean hands, pure heart, um, not, uh, go, not giving in to idolatry, and uh, truthful lips. You know, not swe swearing falsehood by their lips. Pero, napaka bigat naman nun. <laughs> Hindi naman yata lahat kayang gawin yun. Because, you know, si David din ang nagsabi sa Psalm 14, 2 verse 3, The Lord looks down from heaven on the children of man to see if there is anyone who understands. To see if there is anyone who seeks after God. But, they have all turned aside. Together, they have all become corrupt. There is none who does good, not even one. Yes, even, even David said, Who can ascend the hill of the Lord? And then he enumerated four qualifications, only four lang ha. Four lang, pero hindi pa rin magawa natin. Kasi sabi ni David, I, The Lord looks down and he sees if there is anyone who seeks God. But David admittedly said, there is no one. No one does good, not even one. And true enough, in our lives, we have copied the sins of our forefathers. No matter how much we try to be clean, to be pure, to be holy, we cannot. Because we do it on our own strength, on our own ability. That's why no matter how much we try, our hands are not clean. We are corrupt. We commit dirty sins. Our hearts are not pure. Jeremiah 17, 9. They are deceitful. Our hearts are deceitful above all things. And it is desperately wicked. Our lives are full of cursing and lying. Because our, lives are, our lips are not surrendered to God. Amen? And our lives are full of idolatry in our hearts or in our uh, idolatrous worship in our religion because we have copied the sins of our uh, forefathers. Kaya po sa sarili natin, hindi natin kaya lahat ng qualifications na ito na sinasabi ni David. Kaya po, 
babalikan po natin yung pinag-aralan natin nung nakaraang linggo, which is, you know, the journey to the cross. Praise God, because on our own, we cannot, we cannot try to be pure or holy or to be truthful or to, ha- to surrender idolatry in our hearts. Sapagat napakarami nating mga idolatry sa puso natin, idolatry natin, mas mahal natin ang Diyos, ay mas mahal natin kesa sa Diyos ang pera, mas mahal natin kesa sa Diyos ang, 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 ang K-pop, mas na, ginugugol natin ang, ang maraming oras sa pagbabasa, sa panunood ng mga K-pop, uh, lahat ng mga bagay na K-pop, higit sa Panginoon. Kala natin, okay lang to, but if you are spending more time and moments with this K-pop than God, that is idolatry. And God hates idolatry. You will, God will bring down idolatrous worship. At hin- pag hindi mo yan sinuko sa Panginoon, you will, bri- you will go down with your idolatry. Bab- wawasakin at babasagin ng Diyos ang lahat ng mga idolatry sa buhay ng tao, sa mundo. At kapag hindi mo yan isunuko ngayon pa lang, kasama kang mawawasak, kasama kang babagsak. Kaya ngayon pa lang tinatawagan tayo ng Diyos na isuko ang lahat ng idolatry sa puso natin. Idolatry sa pagmamahal sa pera, idolatry sa pagmamahal sa mga celebrities, higit sa Diyos. We are so obsessed. We spend time, a lot of time, like three hours, five hours, watching, enjoying their music, enjoying their presentations, their performances, more than God. You cannot even listen to a godly music. Pero punong-puno yung playlist mo ng, 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 ng lahat ng mga worldly music. This is idolatry in the heart. You don't have an idol in your altar, but you have an idol in your heart. And God wants you to surrender that because God will break it down. And if you do not surrender it now, you will go down with your idolatry. You will be broken down. You will be judged with your idolatry. And so God wants us to surrender that. Now, we cannot do that, as I said, on our own strength. That's why there is the cross. Kung titingnan po natin sa verse 5, tuloy po natin ang sabi ni David, if you, are, if you will do this, Psalm 24 verse 4, you will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God, His Savior. Ano raw ang mangyayari sa'yo? Ano raw ang matatanggap mo? Blessing. Blessing. Blessing is the product of your obedience. Sabi po sa ibang version, He will receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of His salvation. Dalawa, blessing and righteousness. Blessing ay resulta at consequence ng iyong obedience sa Diyos. Righteousness is the consequence of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done on the cross. Because we cannot have our own righteousness. Wala tayong sariling katuwiran. Pero yung katuwiran ng Panginoon nung siya'y namatay sa cross, magkakaroon tayo ng karapatan. At iyon ay idadamit niya sa atin. I-impute niya sa atin. By the atonement on the cross, Jesus Christ paid for the penalty of our sins. And so, whatever righteousness that we cannot do in the past, we cannot achieve righteousness on our own, no matter what we do. People think that they can achieve righteousness by doing donation by millions on their simbahan. People think that they will receive righteousness by, you know, having a double degree or, or a doctorate or PhD. People think that they will have righteousness if they will have a fat bank account in the bank. Pero hindi po yun ang way to righteousness because righteousness is only the work and the work of God. Ang Diyos lang po ang may trabaho nun. Yung blessing mo depende sa pagsunod mo. Tama po yun. Blessing is dependent on your obedience. God cannot bless you if you are not obedient. Anong klaseng Diyos yun? Merong isang anak na sumusunod ng matapat, tapos merong isang anak na swail hindi sumusunod, tapos pareho sila makakatanggap ng blessing. Asaan yung justice? Nasaan yung katuwiran? God is a righteous God. Amen? But if we are willing to surrender ourselves to God and allow His righteousness to clothe us, so that we can have access and pre- into the presence of God, then doon magkakaroon ng kaibahan ng lahat. Amen? Ngayon, hindi, hindi ka na mag struggle Amen? Hindi ka na mag struggle na pumunta sa presence ng Panginoon. Amen? Sapagkat ang righteousness ng Panginoon ang magbubukas nito. Amen po ba? 
Amen. Tuloy natin sa verse 6. Such is the generation of those who seek Him, who seek your face, O God, of Jacob, Sela. Yan. So, sa verse 6, ito yung paraan ni David of identifying the God's covenant people. God is a covenant-keeping God. Binention niya doon, sabi niya, such is the generation. Ito raw po yung mga generation ng mga taong nagsisik sa Panginoon, sinisik ang face ng Panginoon, na Diyos ni Jacob, the God of Jacob. Amen? Because there are many kinds of gods in this world. There's the God of uh, the Hindus, the God of the Buddhists, the God of the... You know, there are so many religions who's, who have a lot of different gods. But it is very specific in Psalm 24 verse 6, David is mentioning the God of Jacob. The God of Jacob. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because why? God is a covenant-keeping God. He has promised blessing to Abraham and his descendants. And we, you know, by the virtue of what the Lord has done on the cross, we are the spiritual Israelites. We are the branch that has been engrafted in the vine. Tayo po ay uh, branch na naikabit na sa puno. Ang is, mga Israelita ang, 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 ang branches. But we are the engrafted branches. And, you know, by the virtue of what the Lord has done on the cross, nagkaroon po tayo ng bahagi sa covenant na iyon. Hallelujah. Nagkaroon po tayo ng bahagi sa promised blessing na iyon ng Panginoon. Amen? And so, it's all for us to enjoy. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And the Lord says, you know, I have come that you might have life and might, and might have it more abundantly. Ito ang kalooban ng Lord sa atin. That your joy may be full. Ito ang kalooban ng Panginoon sa atin. That we will be able to, to stand before the Lord and, uh, you know, imputed by the righteousness of the Lord and have access to the blessing that God has promised. Because on our own, we don't have righteousness. On our own, we don't have purity and holiness. But if we come to the Lord and we let ourselves, O oh God, be reconciled, we let ourselves be reconciled to God in verse 5. The promises of blessing will flow. Amen? Amen? The promises of blessing will flow. And what do you mean by blessing? It is unlimited. Hallelujah. It is unlimited. Physical blessing. Amen? By the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. We can have healing from our sickness and disease. We can have healing from our suffering. We can have healing from our infirmities. Whatever is the name of your sickness, disease, whether it is incurable or not, whatever name that is, it is the blessing of God that has been promised to you that you can claim to have. And so you can have your healing. Amen? Verse 5 promises the blessing from whom God chooses to give to His people so that He can draw His people to Him. We read in Psalm 65 verse 4, Blessed is the one you choose and bring near to dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, the holiness of your temple. We are studying Psalm 24. If you look back at Psalm 22, Makikita po natin doon yung image na dinescribe ni David. Years before the cross, years before the crucifixion of the Lord, dinescribe po sa Psalm 22 yung death, trials, and suffering ng Panginoong Heso Kristo. Psalm 22 yon. Pagdating sa Psalm 23, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. Dito po dinescribe ng Panginoon pagkatapos ng suffering and, and cross, ay pagiging shepherd ng Panginoon kung saan ibibigyan niya tayo ng blessing He makes me to lie down in green pastures What is that? Blessing, peace, rest Amen? Prosperity, green pastures means prosperity Kaya hindi ka dapat matakot na ikaw ay magugutom o mamamatay sa gitna ng pandemya sapagkat ang iyong Panginoon ay ang iyong pastol. Hindi kanya pagkukulangin, hindi kanya pababayaan. He will make you lie down in green pastures. Hallelujah. That is God's promise. Jesus Christ paved the way for that when He died on the cross. At dito sa Psalm 24, God through David is giving us the blueprint. Paano mo ma 
uh, access yun. Paano mo may enjoy yung fullness na yun ng kanyang creation? Paano mo may enjoy yung blessings na yun ng kanyang creation? Sinabi ni David, Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Sinagot ni David, Apat na paraan. Have a clean hand. Have a pure heart. Do not indulge in idolatry. And do not indulge in lying and deception. These are your key to blessings and victory. At ituloy po natin, and I would like to end in this, when David said in Psalm 24 verse 7, Lift up your heads, O you gates, be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates, lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he? This King of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. Mahilig pong magtanong si David. Amen? Sino ang makakaakyat sa burol ng Panginoon? Sino ang Diyos ng kaluwalhatian? Who is this King of glory? He asked in Psalm 24 verse 7. And as we see, He answered it Himself. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Hallelujah. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Spratlis is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Every coral, every sea creature in that part of the West Philippine Sea is the Lord. And the Lord is declaring, I am the King of glory. He is not only the owner, but He is the King. And if He is the King, the Bible says He is strong and mighty. He is mighty in battle. God is not only asserting his ownership of everything on this earth, but he is also asserting his lordship and kingship. So there is no battle that is not won by the Lord. There is no army that will win against the Lord because the Lord is declaring, I am the Lord strong and mighty. I am the Lord mighty in battle. So, if worse comes to worse and there will be battles, the Lord our King is our mighty warrior. The Lord our King ang magtatanggol sa atin. Psalm 24 verse 7 and 8, sabi ni David, we read as God's declaration in Psalm chapter 2, As for me, I have set my King on Zion my hill. Verse 7 and 8, Psalm 2, 7 and 8, I will tell of the decree the Lord said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will make the nations your inheritance and the urns of the earth as your possession. Psalm 2, 7 to 8. Amen? Sabi ng Panginoon, hingin mo sa akin ang mga bansa at ito'y pagkakaloob ko sa iyo. Hingin mo sa akin ang the nations of the earth, ang sabi ng Panginoon, and I will give it to you. Ask of me, and I will give the nations as your inheritance, and the ends of the earth as your possession. Amen? So what can we learn from Psalm 24? We can learn that God is God, and we are not. We are not gods. Hindi po tayo Diyos. Marami pong mga bansa ang arogante sa pagkatakala nila sila ang Diyos at sila ang may-ari ng lahat ng bagay na gusto nilang angkinin. Pero ang Psalm 24 po ay nagdedeklara and I declare prophetically that God is, is still God. Amen? He is still God and He sits on the throne. And those who pretend to be gods, small gods, God will put them into a base. Sila po ay papahiya ng Diyos. Sila po ay wawasakin ng Diyos. We cannot view ourselves as the center of the universe because truly God is the center of the universe. We cannot, we should stop assuming that everything revolves around us. 
Amen? Itigil na natin yung kaisipan na tayo ang hari at Diyos ng ating mga sarili. Na tayo ang hari at Diyos ng mga nasa paligid natin. Na lahat sila ay dapat sumunod sa atin sapagkat tayo ay Diyos. Small gods. We should stop, you know, believing that because we have, you know, the biggest wealth in the world, because we have you know, people around us and we have a mighty army around us that we can do anything and everything that we want because that is such a foolishness. You are not the center of the universe. God is the center of the universe. The earth is the Lord and everything in it. God is the center of our lives. He is the only King of glory. Too many of Marami po sa atin ang uh, umalis ng church. Umalis sa Panginoon. Sa pagkatakala natin, yung Panginoon natin ay wala lang. Mahinang klase. But the Lord is declaring, I am the King of glory. I am the mighty warrior. I am mighty in battle. I am strong. David is saying, Who is this King of glory? Who is this King of glory? People are asking, Sino pinagmamalaki nyo? Sinong pinagmamalaki nyo? Kaya nyo ba kaming labanan? Napakaliit nyo. Maliit lang, maliit lang kayo. Marami kami. Malaki kami. Powerful kami. Meron ba kayong nuclear missile? Meron ba kayong uh, militia? Meron ba kayong, uh, meron ba kayong mga pandigma? Meron ba kayong mga instrumentong pagdigma? <laughs> meron kaming king of glory. Who is this king of glory? Ang tanong nila. Sino yung pinagmamalaki nyo? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. So, Philippines, lift up your hands. Oh, you gates, lift them up. You ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. That the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? Tanong ni David. The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. Marami po ang mag pretend to be kings, to be lords. Marami ang magpapretend to be powerful and mighty because they have their militia, they have nuclear missiles, they have this, uh, you know, war armaments. But there's only one king, and that is the king of glory, the Lord Jesus Christ. When the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of the Covenant was the symbol of the presence of God, that is why the Israelites gained victory after victory, after victory. The Ark of the Covenant is no longer present in our day because the Ark of the Covenant has been uh, fulfilled by the Lord when He died on the cross and he, torn, he has torn the veil that separates us from God. Now, we have free access to go into the presence of God. Praise God for the sacrificial lamb, for Jesus Christ who died on the cross. But that Ark of the Covenant is symbolic of the presence of God. At kinakailangan meron tayong presence ng Diyos kung gusto nating magtagumpay. We should have the King of Glory. We should accept the King of Glory because He is coming. The Bible says, He is coming. King David wrote this psalm in celebration of the arrival of the Ark of the Covenant in Jerusalem in commemoration of their victory. You know, against their enemies. And so they welcomed the Ark of the Covenant. And they rejoiced. That's why he said, Who is this King of Glory? Lift up your hands. They were celebrating. In the New Testament, Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem. At ang kanilang mga palaspas ay kanilang wave. Their branch of, of palm branches were waving. And they were celebrating, Hosanna! Hosanna! The King of Kings. Amen? Hosanna, Hosanna, the King of Kings. Likewise, in our lives, you might be asking, who is this King of Glory? Hindi mo pa siguro kilala. You need the King of Glory in your life. He is coming. And what do you do? What do you do? Ano ang ginagawa mo? Tinatanggap mo ba? Wini-welcome mo ba? Will you lift up your head and say, Come, Lord Jesus. Will you lift up your head and say, he is the King of glory, mighty warrior, mighty in battle. Amen? So, the Ark of the Covenant was, oh no, was ent- entered Jerusalem in 2 Samuel 6, 11 to 18. 
at si Jesus Christ pinulfil po niya ito sa Acts 1:9 to 10 nung siya po ay nabuhay mula sa mga patay at umakyat sa langit pinatunayan niya by his resurrection that he is a true god because he rose from the dead in our time and day what are we left to do we are left to do to fulfill that in our lives by accepting the king of glory in our lives And if you are watching right now, you feel so defeated, you feel so hopeless, you feel so discouraged, you feel like you know it's the end of your life. You are hanging by the thread because of so many things that are, you know, pulling you, pulling you down, trying to to make you feel dead and discouraged. But lo and behold, the Lord is saying, "Anak." Nandito ako. Hindi ako nanghina. At kailanman hindi ako manghihina. I am mighty and strong. I am your mighty warrior. I am mighty in battle. So whatever battles we are fighting right now, on a personal scale, or on a national scale, or on a world scale, we are amidst turmoil <coughs> and dangerous, you know, calls circumstances. Ang map, sino ang mapagkakatiwalaan natin? Ano ang magagawa natin? Kagaya ni David, magkaroon po tayo ng perspektibo, tumingin po tayo sa burol, tumingin po tayo sa Panginoon because He alone is the King of glory. Jesus Christ is the King of glory. He is powerful. He is great. He is amazing. His presence is incredibly wonderful and strong as well. Amen. Siya ay mabuti, ma- siya ay maganda, he's wonderful and awesome, but he is also mighty. He's the owner of all creation. At yan po ang kinakailangan nating gawin. Let us feel that. Let us, you know, put our hearts and soul into that. Let us look at Psalm 24, you know, as as a declaration that God is the God of the earth. He is the owner of everything and If God is with us, who can defeat us? Kung kapag kasama natin ang Panginoon, sinong makakatalo sa atin? So it is the same question that David asked two thousand, many, many years ago. It is the same question that I am asking you now. Who is this King of Glory? Do you know this King of Glory? Do you know this mighty King of Glory. Do you know this is strong King of Glory? He is the King of Glory and He is coming again. Amen. To make everything new. So ano po ang gagawin natin? Kinakailangan po nating tanggapin ito. At magagawa po natin ito kapag tayo po ay magkakaroon ng malinis na puso, malinis na buhay, mak- truthful lips. Amen. And we Tinatakwil po natin ang idolatry. Idolatry sa buhay natin. Ito po ang nais nating uh, gawin ng Panginoon sa buhay natin. At sa oras pong ito, tayo po ay makakaranas, kagaya ng pangako, ng Psalm 24. Blessings, Psalm 24 verse 5, You will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God your Savior. In the next, you know, sa mga susunod na mga araw, susunod na mga linggo, you will see ang mga girian ng mga bansa. You will see ang girian ng mga superpowers. Could daw, sabi nila, sapagkat sila ang mga superpowers ng mga bansa. Kapag nangyari at naganap ito, huwag kayong, huwag kayong mabibigla. Huwag kayong uh, matataranta. Amen? You always go back to your God, to your King, to your, you know, to the, to your glorious King because He is control, in control. And I'm giving you this message, Psalm 24 verse 1, to establish you so that whatever happens in this world, you will know that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Yung fullness na yon nais ng Panginoong maranasan natin. Yung fullness na yon nais ng Panginoon na bumuhos sa buhay natin. Eh may pandemya, mangyayari ba yon? Ang, pa, ang Diyos ay <laughs> hindi naka, nakadepende sa pandemya. Ang Diyos ay Diyos, may pandemya o wala. Kaya ikaw, ang buhay mo dapat nakaangkla 
sa Diyos na yan na may ari ng langit at lupa. Uh, sa Diyos na yan ng Psalm 24. Amen? So, he declared himself as the owner of everything. And now, he is declaring himself as the king of glory. The mighty warrior. Mighty in battle. So, whatever battles you are fighting right now, whatever struggles you are having right now, the Lord is your mighty warrior. The Lord is your king of glory. He is mighty in battle and he will fight for you. He promised not to leave you. He promised not to forsake you. So whatever is happening in this world, put your trust in him. Put your faith in him. And he promised blessings will overflow you. Amen. Now, if you don't know yet the King of Glory, if you don't know Jesus Christ in your life, this is the right time. This is the perfect time. And the, those who can accept Him, you know, in their hearts, should have a pure heart, a clean hand, and shuns away idolatry as well as having truthful lips. So sa oras na to, kung ang buhay mo ay hindi pa ganun, Nawa ay uh, lumapit ka sa Panginoon sa oras na to at ipagkatiwala mo ang buhay mo at ang pangako niya, pagpapalain ka niya, ipaglalaban ka niya. Siya ang iyong King of Glory. He is your King of Glory. He will fight for you. He will bless you. He will save you. Kaya naman inaanyayahan kita. Ipikit mo ang iyong mga mata. Itaas mo ang iyong dalawang kamay. Sabihin mo, Panginoon, naging madumi ako. Ang aking mga kamay ay humawak ng maduduming bagay. Ako ay nagpakalunoy. Ako ay nagpakalunod sa bisyot kasalanan. Ako ay nagpakalunod sa nikotin, alcohol, drugs. Ako ay gumawa ng maraming kalikuan. Ako ay gumawa ng maraming kasalanan. Ako po ay nakipagniig sa hindi ko asawa. I have committed lustful sexual immorality. And so I come to you. Forgive me, Lord. Patawarin mo ako, O Diyos, sa lahat ng mga kalikuan, karumihan, kasalanan na aking nagawa. Nasabi, nabanggit, naisip. Pati na ang aking mga isip, Panginoon. I have a lot of impure thoughts. I have a lot of pornographic, lustful thoughts. Forgive me. I have a lot of depressive, obsessive, suicidal thoughts. Forgive me. Patawarin mo ako, Panginoon. Gayon na rin na ako ay nagsusuko ng aking mga idolatry sa iyo. Isinusuko ko ang aking mga Diyos-Diyosat. Sinusuko ko ang aking pagmamahal sa pera. Isinusuko ko ang aking pagmamahal sa aking mga idols, mga celebrities, na aking pinaggugugulan ng panahon, ng pananalapi. Patawarin mo ako sapagkat ako ay nagmahal sa tao. Patawarin mo ako sapagkat Inidolo ko ang tao higit sa Diyos. Patawarin mo ako kung ako'y may mga imahe na nakalagay sa altar na aking dinadasalan. Patawarin mo ako kung ako'y may mga imahe na aking pinapanalanginan. Patawarin mo ako kung ako'y nagdadala ng mga kandila, mga bulaklak at inaalaya ng mga imahe ito. Patawarin mo po ako sa aking pagsamba sa Diyos Diyosan. Patawarin mo po ako kung ako naging panatiko sa relihiyon at hindi naging panatiko sa Diyos. Patawarin mo po ako, Panginoon, kung ako'y sinungaling na tao. Buka na ng bibig ko ang pagsisinungaling. Patawarin mo po ako kung ako hindi naging totoo at hindi naging tapat sa aking asawa, sa aking pamilya, sa aking mga mahal sa buhay. Patawarin mo po kung ako'y nagsinungaling sapagat hindi ako naging tapat sa aking Diyos. Patawarin mo po ako sa lahat ng aking kasalanan, rebelyon, sa lahat ng aking kasinungalingan, pandaraya. Patawad po, Panginoon. At sa oras na to, binubuksan ko ang aking puso. Tinatanggap kita, Panginoong Jesus. Pumasok ka sa aking buhay. Ikaw ang aking maging Diyos. Ikaw ang aking maging Panginoon. Ikaw ang aking maging Hari. Jesus, my King of Glory, come into my life. 
Forgive me from all unrighteousness, from all sins and iniquities, from all disobedience, from all lustful thoughts and immoral acts. Forgive me for my lying. Forgive me for my idolatry. Forgive me for everything that I have done that has offended you. Forgive me, Lord. And today, I accept you as my personal Lord, God, Savior, and King. In Jesus' name, Amen. If you have prayed that prayer from your heart, you have received Jesus, the King of Glory. At kasabay noon ay ang pagpapala. Ang kasabay noon ay ang tagumpay. Kasabay noon ay ang blessing. And so whatever you need from God, you have access. God is able and willing to give it to you. And so tell it to God, whatever you need from God right now. Come on. Just declare it. Just ask for it. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Everything that is in it is God's property, is God's creation. And God would like you to be able to enjoy His creation, to enjoy His promised blessings. And so today, come on, just lift up your hands to God and ask whatever you need. Because the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Every wealth, every money, lahat ng bagay ay pag-aari ng Diyos. May kailangan ka ba sa Diyos? Kailangan mo ba ng puhunan? Kailangan mo ba ng breakthrough financial? Kailangan mo ba ng healing? Kailangan mo ba ng kagalingan, himala, pagpapala? Ano man ang kailangan mo sa Diyos, sabihin mo, sapagkat kayang ipagkaloob ng Diyos. Ang lahat ay pag-aari ng Diyos. Hallelujah! And Lord, we... Yes! And Lord, we unfailing love. Hallelujah, Lord. Yes, oh God. Yes, bless your people. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Who is this King of glory? The Lord Almighty is His name. Jesus is His name. The mighty warrior, mighty in battle, strong, powerful, amazing, wonderful. He is your healer. He is your savior. Receive in the name of Jesus. Receive whatever you need from God. Because the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Come on, just worship Him, bless Him, thank Him. And Lord, we trust in Your unfailing love. For You alone are God eternal. Nagpapagaling ang Panginoon sa oras na ito. Lahat ng mga sakit karamdaman, ano man ang iyong pinagdaraan ng mabigat na laban, problema ng buhay, dumarating ang tulong ng Diyos. Tanggapin mo sa pangalan ni Jesus. Sa oras na ito, ang Panginoon ay kumikilos, gumagalaw sa lahat ng bansa, Walang anumang bansa na hindi may papa sa ilalim sa kapangyarihan ng Panginoon. At ang Panginoon ang siyang magtatanggol sa atin ang sabi ng Panginoon, The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. For He has established it upon the seas. He has established it upon the waters, upon the rivers. 
Everything, lahat ng bagay ay pag-aari ng Panginoon. Hallelujah. Yes, O oh God. Yes. Your name on high. Yes, Lord. And Lord, we trust in your unfailing love. Amen. Sa oras pong ito, we will just... Uh, Isasabay na po natin for healing. Hindi pa po ako nag-pray kanina ng healing because we will have Holy Communion after we have uh, declared that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Ang Panginoon po ay uh, handa po tayong i-bless sa lahat ng ating pangangailangan, financial, but as well as physical. Kaya po, in time for... Uh, The Holy Communion, I will just like to read 1 Corinthians 11:23 to 26 For I have received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night He was betrayed, took bread when He had given thanks. He broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, After supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. 1 Corinthians 11:23 to 26 These are the elements of Holy Communion. The bread is a symbol of the body of Jesus which was crucified on the cross. Ang tinapay po ay simbolo ng katawan ng Panginoon na nabugbog at nabayubay sa krus ng Kalbaryo. Ang sabi po doon sa ating binasa, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We are doing this to remember and commemorate the sacrifice of the Lord when He gave His life on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins, for the healing of our bodies. And so, if you are in your homes, wherever you are in this world, this is a holy ordinance that we are asked by the Lord to do. Do this in remembrance of me. Kaya nasaan ka man ngayon, kumuha ka ng tinapay. Ano mang klase itong tinapay, sapagkat ito lamang ay isang simbolo. Hindi po ito uh, katawan ni Kristo, kundi ito po ay simbolo lamang ng katawan ni Kristo. Kaya nasaan ka man ngayon, kumunta ka sa kusina mo, kumuha ka ng bread, kumuha ka ng sky flakes. Whatever symbol that you can take as a symbol of the body of Christ that was bruised and hung on the cross, For your sins and for my sins. And let us have this communion that as we take this bread, symbolically we are accepting what the Lord has done on the cross. And the Bible says, by His stripes we are healed. By His wounds we are healed. Sa mga latay ni Jesus, tayo ay magaling na. Sa mga sugat ni Jesus, tayo ay magaling na. Kaya kung ikaw ay may sakit karamdaman, ikaw ay nasa Canada, Australia, nasa ang lugar ka man ng mundo, kumuha ka ng tinapay, kapatid. At alam ko na sa oras na to, dakilang bagay ang mararanasan mo, dadaloy ang himala ng kagalingan sa iyong katawan. Habang iyong kinakain ang tinapay ay dadaloy ang himala ng kagalingan. The miracle of healing will flow upon your body. Because by the stripes of Jesus, by His wounds, we are healed. 
Isaiah 53 verse 5. And so, habang itong elementong ito ay ating itinataas, awitin natin ang awit na iyan. He was wounded. Yes! Yes! Transgression. He was wounded for our transgressions. For our iniquities Surely He bore our sorrows Our sorrows And by By the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. Father, bless these elements of bread. That as we partake of these elements, O God, the truthfulness of your word in Isaiah 53 verse 5 shall come into our bodies, shall flow into our bodies. Let your healing flow, O God, as we take these elements, O God. Sila na nanonood ngayon at nakikinig at nakikibahagi sa Holy Communion na ito. Padaluin mo ang iyong himala na kagalingan sa kanilang mga katawan, sa kanilang mga buto, sa kanilang mga puso, sa kanilang mga muscles and nerves and everything, O oh God, sa bawat himaymay ng kanilang mga laman, sa bawat himaymay ng kanilang mga katawan na ma, dumaloy ang iyong himala at kagalingan. Sa pangalan ni Yesus, sa pangalan ni Yesus, kainin po natin ang tinapay. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Pagkatapos po natin kainin ng tinapay, kumuha po kayo ng juice. Kahit na ano pong grape juice na sumisimbolo, sa dugo ng Panginoong Hesus na tumigis sa krus ng Kalbaryo. Ang dugo pong iyon ang nagbayad ng ating kasalanan. It is the blood of Christ that has paid the penalty of our sins. It is the blood of Christ that has washed away our iniquities, transgressions, and sins. And this is a symbol. This juice is a symbol of that blood. At sa oras pong ito, atin pong inumin ang, ang juice na ito at habang iniinom po natin ay tanggapin po natin ang kapatawaran at paglilinis sa lahat ng ating kasalanan. That cleanses me It's your blood that gives me life It's your blood that took my place in redeeming sacrifice. Redeeming sacrifice. 
washes me whiter than the snow than the snow my Jesus God's precious sacrifice Pasalamatan mo ang Panginoon, ikaw ay magaling na. Pasalamatan mo ang Panginoon, ang iyong sakit ay wala na. Pasalamatan mo ang Panginoon sapagkat nilinis ka na niya ng kanyang makapangyarihan at banal na dugo. At sa oras na ito, ikaw ay may panibagong buhay. Ikaw ay may buhay ng tagumpay. Ikaw ay may buhay ng pagpapala. At sa oras na ito, ang Panginoon ay patuloy na kumikilos at gumagalaw sa iyong buhay. At wala nang natitirang ikaw ay dapat gawin, kundi siya ay pasalamatan, luwalhatiin, at parangalan sa iyong buhay. Sabihin mo, Lord, thank you for my healing. Lord, thank you for my victory. Lord, thank you for my salvation. And I seal that with the blood of Jesus today and forevermore. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Amen. Palakbakan po natin ang Lord sa napakagandang mensahe na ibinaba niya sa araw at oras na ito. At ngayon po ay dadako na tayo sa ating pagbibigay ng ating tithes and the offering. Mga kapatid, maaring sabihin natin, pandemic ngayon, but still, bakit nga ba tayo nagbibigay? Amen po. Bakit patuloy tayo yung nagbibigay? Ang sabi po ng Ang sabi po ng Matthew 22 verse 37 and to 39, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul and mind. And next, love your neighbor as yourself. So, kung bakit po tayo ay nagbibigay palagi? Tuloy-tuloy po tayo yung nagbibigay kasi nagmamahal po tayo sa Diyos. Amen po. Nagmamahal po tayo sa ating kapwa. Lalo pa nga po sa ating kapwa na hindi paligtas. Amen. At ano po yung ating ibinibigay mga kapatid? Tinuruan po tayo ng Malakay 3A to 12 na ibigay po ng buo ang ating tithes and offering. At ipinangako din doon ng Lord kung ating pong ibibigay ito ay masagana rin po ang kanyang pagpapala sa mga buhay natin. Ibubuhos niya, bubuksan niya ang mga durungawan ng langit, ibubuhos niya ang masaganang pagpapala na, wala, na walang sukat di kalagyan. Amen? So napakabuti po ng ating Panginoon. At tayo po ay nagbibigay para kanino po? Para po ba sa Lord? Nagbibigay po tayo para tayo rin po ang makinabang. Sa ating pagbibigay, sinabi po ng, ng Lucas 6.38, Ikaw ay magbigay sa hustong takal, siksik, liglig at umaapaw. Ikaw ay magbigay at ikaw ay bibigyan din naman hustong takal, siksik, liglig at umaapaw. Amen. So kung bakit tayo nagbibigay? Kasi mahal natin ng Lord, mahal natin ng ating kapwa. At kung tayo ay nagiging masunurin niya po sa ating pagbibigay, sinusunod natin ng ang Malakay 3a to 12, pangako po ng Lord doon ay masaganang pagpapala. Amen po. Masaganang pagpapala na tayo pong nagbibigay ang magkakamit noon, ang makakaranas noon. Amen po. So, ngayong panahon ng pandemic, 
hindi na po bago to eh. Dahil alam po natin na tayo mga Kristiyano na nagbabasa ng Biblia, ng mga kasulatan ng Diyos, alam po natin na dumaranas talaga sila ng mga pagsubok. Dumaranas sila ng mga pandemic na katulad ng nararanasan natin ngayon. Katulad po doon sa 2 Corinthians chapter 8, di po ba yung Macedonian Church, dumanas din po sila doon ng, ng ganitong klase ng pandemic o kaya paghihirap o anumang tagutom o anuman ang kakulangan o anumang pandemya ang dumana sa mga tao. Pero doon sa Macedonian Church, sila po ay kusang loob. Buong puso. May pusong punong-puno ng kagalakang nagbibigay. At higit pa nga po ang kanilang ibinibigay. Amen? Higit pa sa kanilang makakayanan ay ibinibigay nila sa kanilang church. Bakit po tayo nagbibigay? Kasi mahal po natin ng Lord. At mahal po natin ng ating kapwa, lalo na nga po ang mga hindi paligtas. Amen? So mga kapatid, ngayong panahon ng pandemic, hindi po hadlang para hindi po natin maibigay ang ating tithes and offering. Through GCAS, through uh, bank transfer, nandyan po ang BPI. Sa mga taga-panood po natin, sa mga kapatiran natin na nasa malalayong lugar, Madali na po ang mag-send ng money ngayon. Kung nais niyo po maging kabahagi ng iglesyang ito, ng totoong iglesia na tinawag ng Lord at ginagamit sa huling kapanahonan na to, magbigay po tayo ng tithes and offering. O ano man ang hinihingi ng Lord sa atin, kung ito po ba ay first fruits hinihingi ng Lord sa atin, ibigay po natin. Kagaya nga po ng mensahe, di po ba? Ang lahat ng bagay ay sa Diyos. So ano ang kinakatakot natin na mawala sa atin? Ay eh, ang Diyos ng ating pinagtitiwalaan ang may, ang may ari ng lahat ng ito. So paano tayo mag-aalala para hindi natin ibigay ang ating tithes and offering? Amen? Alam natin na ang Diyos natin ay makapangyarihan at kayang gawin ng lahat para tayo ay pagpalain. Maraming pangako ang Lord sa atin. Nung tinanggap natin si Christ bilang Lord God and Savior ng buhay natin, Tinanggap natin ang buhay na walang hanggan. Tinanggap natin ang kagalingan. Amen? So, ano bang problema natin, mga kapatid? Wala na po tayong problema. Kung ang Lord ang ating sinasandigan sa lahat ng oras, kung ang Diyos ang ating pinagtitiwalaan ng ating mga buhay, ano mang pandemic ang dumating sa buhay natin, alam natin may Diyos, at ang Diyos ang tutugon sa lahat ng ating mga pangangailangan. Sabi nga po ng Matthew 6.33. Amen? Uunahin natin ang Diyos, hindi ang ating paglalaba. Uunahin natin ang Diyos, hindi ang panunood ng walang kwenta. Uunahin natin si Lord na ibigay sa Kanya ang ating tithes and offering. Sunod ang ating mga pangangailangan. Amen po ba? So mga kapatid, sabi ng Galatians 6.9, Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper times, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. So, ano po ang nais ng Lord? Huwag tayong susuko. Ano man ang buhay natin ngayon? Ano man buhay to? Kami nga po, close kami ng two weeks. But, thank you Lord. Kasi, ang asawa ko at ako, parang nawili kaming umawit sa Lord. Kahit hindi maganda yung boses ko. We want to praise God. Hindi ko alam yung record ng asawa ko. Pinupost pa. So, sorry sa mga naka-dislikes. But, thank you sa mga nag-likes. And thank you, Lord. Kasi, nilagay ng Lord sa puso namin ang buong pagtitiwala namin sa Kanya. Amen? So, let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper times, proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. So magbigay po tayo, patuloy po tayo magbigay ng tithes and offering at kung ano po ang hinihingi ng Lord sa atin. Whether it is sacrificial giving or love gifts sa man of God or first fruits o pang suporta sa lahat pa ng ating mga pangangailangan ng iglesyang ito. Amen po. Sa ating pagbibigay, alam po natin na wala pong nasasayang, wala pong wala pong hindi napapakinabangan kung dito po sa iglesia ng Diyos natin ito ibibigay. Amen. Hindi po nawawalan ng kabuluhan ng lahat ng ating pera. Tayo po ay patuloy na may radio, nagpapatuloy ang ating live streaming at nakakatuwa nga po. Sa panahon ng pandemya, dumarami po ang ating gawain. Amen? Amen. At patuloy po tayong nagtitiwala sa Lord na 
si Lord ang bahala sa atin. Obedience and faith, blessings po yon para sa ating lahat. So mga kapatid, walang dahilan para hindi po tayo magbigay. At sa ating pagbibigay, huwag po natin kalilimutan ang mga tagapagturo. I-bless po natin sila. Lagi silang parte ng ating mga blessings. Lagi po silang kabahagi ng ating uh, mga pagpapala. Kung ano man ang meron tayo. Kasi, God knows our heart. Amen? Alam ng Lord kung ano yung laman ng puso natin. At alam ng Lord na masaya tayo na nagbibigay sa kanyang iglesia at tumutugon din naman sa kanyang mga lingkod. Amen? Sa patuloy nilang pangangaral sa pagtuturo sa atin, ano man ang buhay natin ngayon, may trabaho man tayo o wala, but still, hindi tayo nagugutom at masarap pa nga ang ating kinakain. At masarap pa nga ang buhay natin kasi hindi tayo pagod. Amen? But, salamat sa Panginoon kasi siya po ang, siya po ang may dahilan ng lahat ng ito. Sa ating pagmamahal sa Diyos, sa ating pagmamahal sa ating kapwa, sa ating pagbibigay ng tithes and offering, sa pagtugo natin sa pangangailangan ng iglesia, ng mga lingkod ng Diyos, tayo po ay pagpapalain ng Diyos. So mga kapatid, tayo po ay magbigay. Tuloy-tuloy. Amen po. Tayo po ay manalangin para po sa ating mga kaloob. Hallelujah. Father God, Panginoon, maraming marami pong salamat sa iyong mga salita. Sa iyong mga salita na patuloy, Lord, na aming pinapanghawakan, lalo na nga po, O Diyos, sa mga panahon na to. Marami po, O Diyos, ang mga walang trabaho. But still, Father God, we know you, Lord, that you are our God who do everything for us. Hindi mo kami pababayaan, hindi mo kami lilimutin, hindi mo kami gugutumin. Ibibigay mo, O Diyos, sa amin ang lahat ng aming pangangailangan, Lord, dahil mahal mo kami. Ikaw nga po, O Diyos, ang unang nagmahal sa amin, Panginoon. Kaya dapat rin naman, O Diyos, kami ay magmahal sa iyo at sa aming kapwa. Maraming maraming salamat, Panginoon, sa mga tithes and offering na ipinagkakaloob, Panginoon, ng aming mga kapatid. Patuloy, Lord, na pagpalain mo ang bawat isa, Panginoon, anuman ang trabaho, maliit man ang negosyo, malaki man ang negosyo, anuman, O Diyos, ang ginagawa ng aming mga kamay, Lord. Hindi po hadlang, Panginoon. Ito po ay iyong pagpapalain, Panginoon. Ibibless mo kami, Panginoon. Ayon niya po, Lord, sa iyong mga pangako. Kung kami magiging tapat lamang na ibibigay namin ang aming tithes and offering, Panginoon. Kami ay pagpapalain mo higit pa kaysa aming mga inaasahan. Maraming maraming salamat, Ama, at dalangin ko mga po, Panginoon, na patuloy mo, Lord, na kami ay pagpalain anumang panahon ito o Diyos, sa anumang paraan. Ikaw po ay gumagawa para kami ay pagpalain. Maraming maraming salamat, Ama. Patuloy mo kaming, um, pag, patuloy mo kaming um, nakastay lamang, nakapuko, nakafocus lamang ang aming mga puso't isip sa iyo. Na nagtitiwala lamang at dumadalangin lamang sa iyo, umaasa lamang sa iyo, Panginoon. Maraming maraming salamat po, O Diyos, sa iyong mga, sa iyong mga pagpapala, Panginoon. Patuloy mo paramihin ito para sa amin, Panginoon, at kami rin, Panginoon, para sa amin kapo at para sa iyong iglesia. Lord, maraming maraming salamat. Ibinabalik po namin sa iyo, O Diyos, ang lahat ng papuri at pagdakila at pagsamba sa tanging pangalan ni Jesus. Amen at Amen. Praise the Lord. Sige po, bago mo tayo dumako. Praise God. Sige po, bago po tayo dumako sa ating pangwakas ng panalangin, muli mag-declara muna tayo ng awit ng katagumpayan sa araw na ito. Sa ating mga nakamit na pagpapala, kagalingan, kalusugan, kayamanan mula sa Panginoon. Hallelujah! Itiklara namin ang araw na ito ay tagumpay at ang susunod pang mga araw ay matagumpay sapagat ang Diyos ay mabuti sa ating mga buhay. Hallelujah!
Hallelujah. Tayo nga pong lahat ay mukha at pumikit, tayo po ay matatang. Dakilan Diyos na makapangyarihan, maraming maraming pong salamat, Panginoon, sa iyong mga sa iyong mensahe, Panginoon, sa oras na to, Lord. Dalangin ko nga, Panginoon, na ang lahat ng tao, Panginoon, ay tumanggap sa iyo, Panginoon. Dalangin ko nga, Lord, ang mga puso't isip nila ay magbukas, Panginoon, sa katotohanan na ikaw, Jesus, ang Diyos, Panginoon, at tagapagligtas ng lahat ng tao. I pray, Father God, na mahito na, Panginoon, ang pandemic na ito, Lord God. I pray, Lord, na tanggapin talaga ng totohanan sa kanilang puso't isip, Panginoon, si Kristo, na aming tagapagligtas. Dahil alam namin, Lord, kung si Jesus ang aming Diyos, kami ay tagumpay sa lahat ng laban. Kami ay victory, Panginoon. Laging tagumpay, O Diyos. Kaya nga po, Lord, nalangin ko, Panginoon, maabot ng iyong mga salita ang lahat ng tao, Panginoon. Kilalaanin nila ang totoo. Alisin mo, Lord, ang kanilang kabulagan sa katotohanan, Lord. Ikaw lamang, Yesus, ang aming kailangan. Wala na pong ibawag ka. Maraming maraming salamat, Ama, at patuloy, Lord, na hindi na mawala sa aming puso't isip ang iyong mga salita. Sa lahat ng oras, Lord, ay salita mo, Lord, ang aming nilalakaran, Lord. Maraming maraming salamat, Panginoon, sa mga lingkod mo na nagpapatuloy, anumang panahon, tuloy-tuloy ang pangangaral. Patuloy mo silang palakasin, Panginoon, palusugin ang kanilang mga pisikal na pangangatawan mo, God. At i-provide mo, Lord, ang lahat pa nilang pangangailangan sa pag-aaral ni Josh, ni Joseph, ni J.I., Lord. Ikaw po, Lord, ang mag-provide. Father God, I pray patuloy nga, Lord, na kami manatili lamang na nag-itiwala sa iyo, Lord. I-bless mo po, Panginoon, ang iyong mga likod na higit pa kay sa dati, Panginoon. At i-bless mo po, Lord, ang lahat ng tagapakinig, Panginoon, at nanunood ng ministeryong ito, ng gawaan ito, simula pa po paninang umaga. Ang aming mga kapatiran na, mal na malalayo, Panginoon, patuloy mo silang i-bless, pagpalain na naman po, Lord, ang kanilang kalagayan sa panahon ito, Lord. Nandyan ka tumutulong sa kanila. Maraming maraming salamat ang mga patuloy, Lord, na kami mamumuhay, na may malinis na puso, isip, malinis na buhay, hindi sasamba sa mga Diyos Diyos at Panginoon. Sapagat ang aming Diyos ay buhay. Buhay na buhay. Sa aming mga buhay at nagpapatuloy na kumikilos at gumagawa ng mga katakilaan, Panginoon, sa aming mga buhay. Maraming maraming salamat po Diyos. Ingatan mo po ang aming mga pamilya. Ingatan mo po ang mga kapatid, Panginoon. Ingatan mo po ang bawat isa at iligtas, Panginoon. Hallelujah! Maraming maraming salamat, Panginoon. Wala po kami masabi kung hindi. Salamat, Lord! Maraming maraming salamat sa iyo, Panginoon. Sa iyo po ang aming pagdakila, pagsamba, at pagpasasalamat, O Diyos. Sa tanging pangalan ni Jesus. Amen at Amen.